Hello, everyone. My name is Diane Donnelly. I am with the Donnelly Group of Keller Williams Flagship of Maryland, right here located in Annapolis, Maryland. I am the president of the Sellers Division of my team. And Andrea here, who we will be speaking with, Andrea Lortangeli, is the buyer's president of the buyer side of our company. And today we're going to be talking about um, getting, getting your contract written so that it's accepted. So how do you strategically buy a home? And Andrea is an expert and she was going to walk us through step-by-step step the blueprint on how to buy a home successfully. Um, Andrea comes to us with about 104 years of real estate experience. Really, it's probably closer to 20, 22. Andrea? I'm actually just getting ready to start my 24th year here in a couple of weeks. So it's almost my anniversary. Happy anniversary to you. Thank you. I don't know <laughs> if that's good or bad. I think I see a lot more wrinkles. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. That just means you're experienced. Exactly. That's what they yes. say. I've gone with that. Absolutely. So today we're going to be talking about step-by-step. -step. How do you strategize, right, Andrea? We're strategizing because we are in a market that is very difficult for buyers. So we have to have a smart strategy to beat um, and outbid your competition, right? Yeah, so today I think what we're gonna tackle first is talking about the six steps um, that you need to take um, before and during the process. So basically six steps, how to buy a home. Um, obviously it's, it's really good for first time buyers, this information, but it's also a good refresher for other people who are gonna get ready to jump into the market here in 2021. So uh, we're kind of going to take it from the preliminary stage all the way to closing, just so you can kind of see the, the full circle of real estate life. Yeah, and we have been doing a buyer's series. So uh, this week, we're going to be talking about these steps. Next week, we're going to be talking about home inspections. What are they? What aren't they? Um, yeah. and what to expect. And last week we talked about, we did a deep dive into getting pre-qualified. So what do you need to do in order to get pre-qualified for a home? We talked about the different loan programs. So today, today let's start out with step one, Andrea, which is? Which is pre-qualification. So if you go back, there is a whole, um, a whole little webinar on pre-qualification in and of itself. So for here, we're just gonna say number one is pre-qualification. And that is important because it lays the groundwork for your affordability um, getting into the process. So it's important for us to know before we do anything, how much home you can afford, um, where you want to be with your payment, because a lot of times you can qualify for more than what you your budget permits every month. So we want to nail that down. And then we need that pre-qualification in place because it's going to come into play later on in the process when we get to submitting the contract. Um, and there are also a lot of different programs out there, especially for first time buyers. There's some money out there that you can get. So you want to be able to review all of the financing programs that are available to you and make the best choice for your specific situation. Yeah, and so last that's week, number one. Yep. And last uh, week we talked about, uh, can you hear that crazy noise? No, I don't oh, hear it. I heard it on my end. It was echo, like feedback. Um, last week, we talked about um, getting pre-qualified by a local lender oh, um, or a lender that you're familiar with. Um, and the reason for that is, can you hear my little bells behind? It me? must be 11 o'clock. It's 11 <laughs> o'clock. <laughs> How could you tell? Um, very so festive. Very festive. Um, so one of the questions that we had is, why would you want to use a local lender versus just a um, an online processing very quick churn and burn type of a lender what do you do you, do you agree with that philosophy of, of using somebody you're in relationship with yes it's a great either question. you or the buyer right or, yep. or you yep. or the buyer. it's a great question because what happens is a lot of times when you go on the internet you say, okay, I make X amount of money. And then they spit out a letter and say, oh, congratulations, Susie, you can qualify for $400,000. But what they don't know is, you know, how are you paid? Are you a W-2 employee? Are you commissioned? Do you get a bonus? So all of those things come into play. Um, and a lot of times these, you know, the internet, I don't want to be beating them up, but the internet lenders, they're just going to spit out a letter and say, yeah, you're pre-qualified. And then when they start taking your documentation, after you go under contract, they find out that, oops, 
your, your, your income is, not, you know, you, you just had a job change, a career change, you're on commission and you don't have a two year history and guess what? The deal blows up. So right. your agent has a relationship with lenders. So like you said, I'm, I'm approaching my 24th year here. Believe me, I've been through my share of lenders. Um, I feel like I have a very good team in place and I know when I send somebody to get pre-approved with one of my lender preferred lenders, the deal's going to happen. They're going to do their due diligence and taking the pay stubs, doing the tax returns, because you want to get pre-approved, especially I can't emphasize that enough in this market. So the pre-qualification letter, eh, um, the pre-approval letter is what you want. That's the solid um, letter that the lender has looked at your your W-2s, your, your bank statements, your tax returns. So you're solid. And, right. and that's a big right. difference when a listing agent gets your offer and you've got a pre-approval in hand versus a piece of paper that says, you know, congratulations, Susie, you qualify for a $200,000 home without taking any documentation. And one of the, the big differentiate differentiators there is when I get a letter, uh, I work again, I work with sellers. So I'm going to, I'm going to be the one on the receiving end of these lender letters. When I look at a lender letter that says, congratulations, you're pre-qualified to purchase this home subject to the loan officer reviewing your credit report, your pay stubs, your bank statements, your W-2s, your tax returns. Well, that doesn't mean anything to me. All that that means is once you apply for this loan, I'll review everything and I'll let you know later if you're pre-approved for it or pre-qualified for it. I would rather see what you're speaking of as a pre-approval letter where the lender has already reviewed all of that information. In fact, if, if, if I get a lender letter on one of my listings from a buyer who is not pre-approved, and I am looking at multiple offers, that, that is immediately pushed to the side, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So thank you for that. Let's talk about number two. What's step number two, Andrea? So number two is your buyer strategy session. Um, and this is a critical meeting with your agent to talk about your, your absolute must haves for the home, uh, maybe some other side things that are important, but not a must have. Um, and by must haves, I mean, what is the minimum number of bedrooms and bathrooms? Do you want a garage? What neighborhoods? Um, how far do you want to be from work and commuting distances? Um, and, and another critical part of this meeting is to be educated on the current marketing conditions. We all know, just like the stock market, the real estate market can be just as volatile and it can change month to month, let alone year to year. So if you're getting ready to jump into the market, if you've never been on the market or if you haven't been in in a while, it's a very different market today than it was seven years ago. So you have to understand what you're getting into um, as you take the step to buy a home. So a lot of people are gonna be like, well, let me just email you what I want, I'm looking for and I'll put you on a search and no. I mean, you really need to get educated. And the number two step is always the one that everybody just doesn't want to bother doing. Like they get pre-qualified and they want to jump in. And I understand the excitement, but your agent really needs to know what you're looking for and to help you navigate um, through the houses. Because a lot of times we go through this whole thing and then, you know, I'll get a, an email from a, a buyer that says, hey, I saw this and I look at it and it's like, nothing that they said were their must haves. So I have to kind of pull them back in and say, hey, you said that having a garage was a must have. You said that your basement was a must have and this home has neither of these things. So before mm -hmm. we just get out there and jump in and you know waste the buyer's time and potentially the seller's time getting in and out of the house, we really wanna make sure we're seeing homes that are on the must, the must have list. Um, and I know it's an exciting process, but sometimes the buyers lose sight of that. I think that's one of the real values that you bring, Andrea, and, and other agents that do that step and don't skip that step is to, it's, it's your job to keep people on task is to help them to um, consider what they may not consider if they didn't have your help. And I often hear you say, wait a minute, let's, let's take a step back. Um, originally, when we met, you said that these three, three things were your priorities. Um, and now I'm hearing something different. Did your priority change or do we just need to circle back a little bit? Correct. 
That's right. the and value of a buyer's agent that is paying attention versus one that says, oh, you want to see these five homes? Let's go. Yeah. Only to find out that, oops, you don't even qualify for, for the one that you fell in love with. Right. It, it can be disappointing for the buyer. I mean, it's an emotional process, so it can be disappointing. And the key thing is, is really understanding the market. So if you go into the market today thinking, oh, OK, well, I'm going to be able to look at 10 homes and I'm going to have my choice of the 10 and I'm going to get this great deal and low ball and offer, it's not going to happen. So if that's the market you're looking for, that's OK. Uh, but that's not today's market. So you know what you, you need to know what you're getting into as you hit the ground running with this. So you are equipped to make the right decisions when you find the, the home of choice and to move on it um, as the market dictates. Andrew, what is the risk for buyers right now if they don't know, if they're not working with an agent who knows and understands today's market? What is the detriment for a buyer who is working with an uneducated agent? Well, first and foremost, if they don't understand the urgency of the market, um, you can find this home and say, oh my God, this is checking all my boxes and it's a Tuesday. And then the agent says, well, we can go see it on Saturday. Well, guess what? That agent just did you a disservice because that home's gonna be gone on Saturday. Um, and that's a disappointment for you because that house might not come around again. Yep. Um, and then also, if um, you know, you're writing an offer and the agent again doesn't understand the market and you say, oh, I wanna go in $10,000 less and I wanna ask for 5,000 in closing and I wanna ask for seven in different inspections, guess what people, you're not, your offer is not gonna get accepted because you're gonna be competing. Um, so and, that's why, and that's why I, I, I said today that at the start that you need to be, when you're, when you're purchasing your home, you need to be strategic about purchasing your home. You don't just go out and, and randomly choose a house, write a contract, accept it, go to closing. You have to understand the entire picture um, so that when you make your purchase, it's a good purchase for today. It's a good purchase for when you go to resell it. And these are conversations that you have to have in the beginning to make sure that all of your priorities are being set and that you are, uh, you are using the experience of the agent yep. for your future resale. That's correct. Right? Yep. Okay, let's yep. talk about number three, Andrew. Andrew. All right, What's so number three, we, we did our pre-qualification, we did our buyer strategy session, and just a side note, and I know today people are a little weird, might be a little uh, uncomfortable with face-to-face -face meetings for that uh, the, the strategy session, but I've done them on Zoom, I've done them over the phone, and some people are okay face-to-face, -face. so don't skip the step, please. Okay, so I just want to give a little side note there. So, okay, so we got our pre-qualification buyer strategy se session. The next one is the home search. So during this course, you're going to start um, identifying some homes that are going to be ones that you want to actually get in to see. Um, the internet um, and the MLS does a good job. There's a lot of pictures and videos online now, but sometimes the home does not, it's not the reality. The pictures are not the reality <laughs> when you get into the home. So um, you, you earmark the ones that you want to see. You make an appointment with your agent. You want to try to give some notice. Um, so I say that because right now the housing inventory is very low, meaning there's not a lot of homes to choose from. Um, so the other thing is with the COVID restrictions, we only get 45 minutes showing windows. So if you want to see three homes in three geographic areas, it might be a little challenging getting the time slots that we need and allowing for travel time, et cetera, et cetera. So again, it's education and just the buyer understanding what's going to happen when we get into the home search process. But um, once we make the appointment, you tell your agent what you want to see, the agent will make it an appointment. Um, and then get everything confirmed and then you'll meet and, and go out and actually look at um, the homes. And, and during this process, I know a lot of people get caught up when they're in the home, look at the pretty new kitchen, look at the pretty new you know, bathroom, but um, your agent, what I do, I'm kind of looking at the other stuff. You know, I'm not a, an HVAC professional or a plumbing, but I've seen enough homes in my life to know red flags when I see them. Um, so those are the things that I'm going to bring to light when we're looking at it. You know, all the pretty aesthetic things are nice, but you also want to look at the major systems of the home um, and maybe kind of point out to the, the buyer, hey, just 
be careful this H, you know, this HVAC is 15 years old. So that might be something that you have to budget for if this is your home of choice. So that is part of the home search itself. You know, and, and another thing to point out too is, is there's agents that are out there and they just want to quickly sell a home and go on to the next buyer. I have heard you many times over the past 10 years say, this might not be the house for you. Let me, let me talk with you through this. I know that you're excited. I know that you're buying your first home and you want to be in there. I want to talk to you about resale value. I want to give you everything that I know from experience on, on things that would be important. And then I want you to make your decision, but I want you to have all of the facts and consider everything before you put pen to paper and start writing a contract. So I've heard you do that. I think that's very valuable. And, and, and I've heard lots of agents just say, let's just take a step back and make a, a logical decision. Um, and let's temper the emotional side for a few minutes. So I've heard you do that. Do you want to speak to that at all? Yeah, I mean, it's very emotional. So I think as real estate professionals, that's our job. It's not my job to say buy that home or don't buy that home. I look at myself as the consultant and the coach. So I'm going to point out some things that are, you know, positives and some things that might be a consideration um, or red flag. Everything is ultimately always the buyer's decision, um, but it's my job to coach them through it and any agent. And that's kind of the mindset you should take when you're working with people. It's not my job to tell you buy this home or that home, but to coach you and give you the knowledge so you're equipped to make a good educated decision. Right. What about the next step, Andrea? So now we all right. have all, yeah. we've been pre-qualified. We know what we want. We had a great buyer consultation. Uh, what happens after that? So we do our home search and then you find the one. So that next step is to actually create an offer. So you decide you want to create, um, submit an offer on a home. So what happens at that stage is that's when I go to work. So I'll go in, do some research, um, look at the homes, the most current homes that have sold in the neighborhood that are similar to the one that the buyer is considering. Um, and then we talk about things like what price do you want to offer? What settlement date are you looking for? If you're in a lease or something like that, we need to take that in consideration. Mm -hmm. um, earnest money deposit. So every contract you submit an earnest money deposit. So we talk about that. We need to nail down the financing amount that you're doing, um, things that you're going to ask for to be included in the offer. Um, and what inspections that you wanna do, if any. Um, so those are the critical elements that we discuss. And then once we nail down all those, I put the offer together, which in here in Maryland, it's about 30 to 40 pages. A lot of people think it's like one page. Here's my here, here's your five page document. And God, I wish we could do that. But <laughs> but uh, you know, it's it's a litigious type of industry. So every addendum is because there was a lawsuit at some point. Yes. But that being said, so it's about 30 to 40 pages. Uh, we go over that. We sub once the offer is completed. We submit that to the listing agent, and at that point, the listing agent presents that to the seller. Um, and then basically one of three things happen. They accept the offer as written. Um, they can flat out reject the offer, and that usually happens when um, the sellers are emotion they're, they're hurt by your offer. So it was a low ball, and we call that officially the piss-off point. Uh, so we try not to get below to the piss-off <laughs> It's below the piss off point. <laughs> right, below the piss off point. That's when we get a flat out rejection. And then probably the most common is a counter offer. So if there's some term, you know, they might like your offer price, but you ask for some closing. So they might want to minimize that. So it becomes a negotiation back and forth until either we can come to a meeting of the minds and we go under contract or it just doesn't work. We can't come to terms and we, you know, we move on from there. What kind of, what kind of um, strategies are you employing now? We had a whole video on this uh, a few weeks back, but what kinds of things are you employing now to be a little more competitive in this environment than if it was a buyer's market? Yeah, well, I would say 90% of the offers are multiple offers, meaning you're competing with other buyers. Uh, so that being said, most of the time you're either at list price or offering a price over the list price which gives some people heartburn, but we talked about that in step two, so you're prepared. Um, 
we're talking about inspections. So we're, that's actually the next step after contract acceptance. But some people are doing as is inspections, meaning they can do the inspections. Um, and if something is really disturbing to the buyer, they have the right to um, cancel the contract and get their earnest money deposit return. So we see a lot of that right now. Um, and you need to talk to the seller's agent and talk about what's going to be important to the seller. Mm -hmm. So is it settlement date they're trying to hit? Um, might they need a little bit of like a lease back for a couple days? So we try to make it favorable for the seller as well as, as the buyer. Um, yeah, there's, I'm sorry, go ahead, go ahead Andrew. I was going to say, and there's little things you can do. Um, you know, I've had buyers, we write letters and maybe do some videos. Um, you, have, you have actually won contracts because of the letters that you, you suggested they write. Yep. Yep. You know, you have to think about it. You know, you're in, you know, you're in battle with the seller a little bit, but they're human beings, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of people have been in their home for a long time. They've raised their family. They're emotionally tied to the house and they want somebody to love their house just as much yep. as mm -hmm. they do. So all other terms being equal um, and sometimes less. I mean, I just had a buyer win the, over a cash deal um, because the, the seller loved the buyer's letter so much she wanted <laughs> her to have the house and she got the house over a cash deal at the same price. So there are some strategies you can implore um, to get your offer noticed by the seller, um, you know, everything else being equal or close. The whole thing, the entire process that we're going through is a psychological process. <clears throat> so that's coming from on my side, pricing the home, staging the home, marketing the home. You know, um, on your side, it is it is looking at the home, trying to strategize to make it as um, advantageous to a seller as it is to the buyer. So you are, we are both looking for a win-win. We right. want the buyers to feel like they got something. We want the sellers to look to feel as though they got something, and they're both satisfied with that negotiation. So make sure that when you're interviewing agents, they have experience in negotiating and successfully negotiating. And if they don't have the stats to show you that they are successful, there's a reason. <laughs> there's a reason yeah. that they don't have the stats. So it's a good point. Interview. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And I usually tell people, hey, I'm fine with you interviewing other people, but you know, it's this is what I can bring to the table. Um, and, and I tell people, you know, people should at least have 50 transactions under their belt. Um, you know, you don't want to start dealing with my cousin who is a part-time agent or somebody that just got their real estate license because while you're trying to help them and I can appreciate it because it's a family or friend, you're not going to reach your ultimate goal, which is getting uh, your home of choice. They're, they're, they're going to not know how to do something to get your offer selected and you're going to end up being ultimately very disappointed at the end of this and potentially break a relationship <laughs> that was one more solid. importantly yeah, yeah the relationship yeah. could be severed um okay i think we have now we're okay. at home inspection yep so congratulations everybody your offer got accepted so that's when our our next sequence of work begins so a copy of your contract will go to your lender you'll get to choose the title company as the buyer so a copy of the contract will go to the title company so they can start all of their title work. And then we start our inspection. So if you've chosen to do inspections in the contract, generally those are done within 10 to 14 days of the contract acceptance date, which means the inspections have to be done and any repair requests submitted to the seller within that 10 or 14 day period. Um, at that point too, the lender is gonna probably order the appraisal right away and what we would call a, a more balanced market, sometimes the lenders will wait to order the appraisal until the inspections are done. But unfortunately, in today's market, the appraisers are so backed up that lenders are having to order the appraisals in advance to make sure we can get to settlement on time. Um, and then also the lender, when we send the contract to the lender, they're going to you know, contact you again, start collecting the rest of the documentation that they may need. And that kind of is the longest part of the rest of this process. So once we go under contract, the getting that lender final commitment letter, that's what takes the time and getting the appraisal done. So uh, we'll do our inspections um, and pretty much if there's homeowners association or a condo association involved, 
we get what's called a resale package. The seller orders that for the buyer. And then once the buyer gets those documents in their hands, they have X amount of time to review the, top, the documents because it is a contingency for the buyer. So if you can't live with something in those body of the HOA or condo docs, you can cancel and get your earnest money deposit back. So that's part of that process as well with the inspections, the appraisal and the final loan commitment. And in the final, final loan commitment, Andrea, is it a good idea for somebody to furn it, to go out and buy all the furniture for their new house before they settle? <laughs> we no. know experience no. not to so, do that. Yeah, so what we say is once you get pre-approved, and even in the beginning, stop all of your spending. So it's basically you're buying your utilities, your food, basic necessities, but you're not gonna pick up any more debt. You're not buying a car. You're not going to buy furniture. Um, some people think, oh, I have my pre-approval. Now I can go out and like spend some money. No, because yeah. what happens in this process right now, right before settlement, sometimes the day of, they're going to repull your credit and then they're also checking your employment to make sure you are still gainfully employed. Um, so do not stop the spending, period. Um, yeah, and don't even inquire. Don't even inquire because right. if somebody pulls your credit, but you don't pull the trigger and accept it, there is an inquiry on your credit report that can bring down your credit score, but it can also alert the lender. Hmm. Are they looking to get more credit somewhere that I need to be aware of? And they start to dig. So you don't right. want even any inquiries on your credit report after the credit's been pulled. Yeah, that's a good point. Especially if you're close, you know, we have our qualifying ratios, which they're called. So if you're kind of right on the bubble there, one little thing that you might buy on credit that you think is innocent may be the difference between you mm -hmm. getting your house and not. So stop all spending until after you go to settlement. So good yes. point. Speaking of settlement. Yes, I think that, that is our final sixth step. and final step. So we, we've done all our uh, inspections. We have our final loan commitment. The title work's done their thing. And we know how much you have to bring to, to settlement. And here we are settlement day. So settlement takes roughly about an hour. It's done at the title company that you've selected. There's a title officer that conducts the settlement. Um, and that's when you bring any money that may be due in a form of a cashier's check or a wire. And that's when you get to sign all the papers. So that's when everybody says you get cramps in your hands. That's the day. Um, that's the, day. the cool thing is with some of the lenders now in the environment we're in, they have um, e-loan signing. So the documents in a closing package that don't require ink signatures, you can sign those online now. So the benefit of that is a settlement day, which is generally an hour, can literally be 15 and 20 minutes because you're going to the settlement company and doing like signing three documents. So yeah. that is a wonderful thing that we have now. Um, it, it's one of the advances we have made during this COVID period as an industry. And I hope we continue to have that even when we get through all this mess. And, so. and in closing, Andrea, I wanted to touch on that. So we're talking a little bit about COVID. We're in a, a, in a a spike. Um, some people that are watching may be concerned with what do we do in COVID? Is it safe to go out and look at homes? What is your response to that? It's a good question. And the answer is yes, it is safe. So as I mentioned, um, there's only 45 minute showing windows. Only one group of people are allowed in the home at once. Generally a maximum of three people in the home at once, including your agent. So only the decision makers can be in the home. They're asking not to bring parents, children, et cetera, on the showing. So it's me along with whomever's buying the home, a maximum of three in the house at one time. We wear masks, of course. Um, sometimes the sellers require gloves and shoe coverings, which most of the time are provided. I do have my little um, COVID kit, my COVID <laughs> kit in the car. So I have plenty of gloves and booties if we need them. So don't panic. But um, generally speaking, what's happening is that the sellers are leaving all the lights on in the home, leaving some of the doors ajar. So we're not touching a lot of the knobs and things that we, we typically did before in the past. So um, it, it is very safe um, and you know, the, the showings are happening. So you don't need to 
be worried about it. There's a lot of precaution. And of course, we're in addition to our gloves, we have our hand sanitizer that we're using right after the showing as well before we go to the next home. And you guys are driving separately. So the buyers are in one car, Andrew, you're in another car. Correct. Yep. We drive separately. And then when we get to the house, we have our masks on our gloves. And then when we get in the house, some sellers ask to remove the shoes and some are, have shoe coverings that we yeah, wear. It's important. It's important. I'm, I'm glad that we talked on that about that. Um, yeah, is there anything else, yeah. Is there anything else, Andrea, that you wanted to say before we hang up? Well, I, I think the, the process of it so, sometimes seems a little daunting to people, especially first time buyers. Um, but we, you know, we go through the six steps, but it happens very quickly. Mm -hmm. So from the day you decide, yes, I want to buy a home and take that first step of pre-qualification, we can be through this whole process within 45 days. Yeah. Easily. <laughs> going, so it's going to settlement when you get your keys and you're the actual homeowner. So don't let it be daunting. The big thing is to have somebody by your side that knows what they're doing. Yeah. Um, that's the biggest piece of advice that I can give. Uh, now more than ever, you need somebody with experience. Not meaning I've had my real estate license for 20 years, meaning I do actual business year in and year out because you just need to have like your coach and your consultant right next to you the whole time. And it can go very smoothly. There are, there's always, you know, little bumps and things that through the process, but if you've got the right person on your side, um, it can be navigated through very smoothly. Um, and it is an exciting process. That's why I, I choose to work on the buyer side um, because there's nothing like somebody getting those keys on settlement day and just the, you know, the joy of the whole process. It, it's a fun process. So don't be scared. And if you're renting right now, I'm sure just look at your rents if they're going up with the interest rates being as low as they are right now. Sometimes it makes more sense to purchase right now than to rent. So if you've got stable employment, um, good credit, you're a candidate to, to purchase. So um, some people think, oh, I need 20% down and you don't. There's a lot of loan programs where you can get in as low as 3% out of pocket. If you're a veteran, you can get in for 0% down. Um, so there's a lot of loan programs out there. That's why you want to investigate what's best for you in your situation. So if people have more questions, Andrea, how can they reach you? Uh, they can reach me on my cell phone directly, which is 443-521-0710 or via email. It's Andrea, A-N-D-R-E-A -E at tdgmoves.com. And that's the Donnelly Group, M-O-V-E-S.com. So even if you have questions or you might even consider it and say, am I the right candidate? Please reach out to me. I'm just happy to you know, give you valuable information. And it might not be right now, but we can set you up where in the future you can become a home buyer. So mm -hmm. I'm happy to answer any and all questions. I'm here to help. Thanks, Andrew. We appreciate your time and, and sharing all of your experience with us. It's been great. Um, and Kayla is going to put in the remarks uh, Andrew's information. So you'll be able to grab that. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to Andrea. And remember that we can help any buyer anywhere in the entire United States to buy a home or to sell a home. We have one of the largest uh, referral networks in the country. So if you are looking to buy or sell somewhere else outside of Anne Arundel County, we can help you. So please remember that, pass that on. Um, and if you feel as though this is something that would help you or some of your friends, please share it on your wall so that others can see it as well. Thank you so much, guys. We look forward to seeing you. Happy holidays, and yep. we will see you in two weeks. Be safe out there, everybody. Take, Take care. care. Bye, guys.